Good morning, my friends. I have a humdinger of a question for you today that I will attempt to answer. Honestly, I don't feel, this is such, such an important question. It just like, ah, oh, gets you right here that I'm going to say that I'm going to give a provisional answer today and I may, I hopefully will have an even better answer coming up within the next few weeks. So, uh, this, this is the question. What does one do with the people in our lives who don't wish us well in our creative endeavors, who either subtly or not so subtly try to sabotage, diminish, undermine, or lay some sort of conditions on successes? Now you owe me this, this, and this. Or who otherwise spit venom. How do we navigate these toxic relationships without shutting down or hardening? So I, back when Life Without Envy came out, I wrote a piece, something like Bile and Begrudgery. If you Google Bile and Begrudgery, you will find it. Because I didn't want to talk about other people's resentment in that book, I wanted to focus on how to, how to deal with your own resentment. But this is, a, this is an angle that I haven't approached before in my work. And so I'm really grateful to this person for sending me this question. So I sent this person the link to the bio and begrudgery piece that I wrote. Um, and I said, well, this, this will be a cathartic read for you, but it won't be, it won't be helpful per se, because I'm writing about, I'm writing to the would be begrudgers and saying, don't do this. <laughs> I have not yet written anything about how to respond to those people in your life who are resenting you on whatever level it manifests. So this is what this person responded, how this person responded. Begrudger is a great term. They're there when you're starting out. They're there when you have small successes. They're there when you have big successes. And no matter where I am, they are hurtful, but more than hurtful. Distracting, but more than distracting. Diminishing, but more than diminishing. It just feels like poison. That's the best word for it. So I have four guidelines that I would offer. Oh my goodness. Um, I'm so glad so many of you are watching. This is lovely. So four guidelines that I would offer. So the first is to recognize that this person's resentment is not your problem. It's not something that you need to fix. It's not something that you can solve. It's not your failure. And I think it's important to, to, to sit with this and to acknowledge this to yourself because I personally have had this, this thing that I do where I believe, not intellectually, but I believe that there's this, or I have believed that there is this, somehow there's this magical combination of words and actions that you can, that you can speak and that you can take that is somehow going to unlock this person's heart, right? And it will get them to practice more self-awareness and give them that revelatory, like, wow, I have behaved in a way that is unkind and, um, you know, maybe I need to be in therapy. In fact, I definitely need to be in therapy. I have had this thing that I do where I'm, I'm, I'm putting it, I'm, I'm taking it on, right? I'm putting it on me that like, I have to be the one to figure out this, like how to unlock this person's, you know, whatever's going on up here that is manifesting in this discord in my relationship with this person. And, um, speaking specifically about my father who, um, I'm pretty sure has a personality disorder. 
Um, that is that is a topic that I will not be sharing in another video. Um, but point being that I I understand I I deeply feel this what the, what this person shared with me in a DM last week. So that's number one. The resentment is not your problem. It's not something that you can figure out. Number two is to practice self-support and self-nourishment. Rather than focusing on what this person is doing or saying and making that the center of gravity uh, or the center of your emotional um, turmoil, uh, bring it back in here and focus on how you can nurture your own, like the, the little like wounded animal inside. And I say wounded animal as opposed to your wounded inner child because a wounded animal is even more vulnerable than a human child. So that's the, that's the second thing that I would say is to focus, focus on your feelings and how you can witness those feelings and support yourself instead of, because, because let's be honest, the person who is flinging their, their bile and begrudgery at you, this is probably someone who loves to make things all about themselves. And then they tell you that you're the one making it all about yourself when you say, I feel hurt by what you said or did. But we'll get to that, that's, that's in a subsequent step. So number three is to evaluate the relationship to consider this relationship in terms of the expenditure of psychic energy. Oh boy. Again, let's be honest. We are not talking about friends here because friends, because we've had, you know, we've all had people who are, you know, doing that whole must be nice thing. And those people don't, tend to stick around, right? If you have um, good self-esteem, you're not gonna let that person um, you know, keep showing up and trying to diminish your accomplishments or diminishing your, your drive, your ambition before you even get to the actual accomplishment. So we're talking about family here, let's be honest, because Unless your family situation is so dire and so, so abusive that you have to say, I am divorcing my parents, I'm divorcing a sibling, whatever, you know, whoever it is. I don't think you can do that legally, but you know what I mean? You're doing it energetically, symbolically. You have to, you, you have to get along with these people, at least, you know, every now and again, when you get together for a holiday dinner or whatever it is. So we're not talking about friends because frankly, if you have a friend in your life, you would say this person is saying toxic things. Um, they're not happy for me. They're not happy for my striving. They're not supportive edit that person out of your life. We are talking about family members who are not quite toxic enough where you would say, I, I wish you well, I hope that you get the help that you need. We're talking about people we still want to have some sort of a relationship with, right? So I want you to, to evaluate the relationship in, in terms of the emotional labor that you are taking on. And in the fourth step, you're gonna figure out your new boundary lines and then you have to stick to them, right? And you need to articulate those new boundary lines, which is the hardest part, right? Because I'm sure, you know, a lot of people watching this video who are resonating with this uh, are probably trying to um, talk and behave like around the unspoken thing, the unspoken resentment, 
because it's awkward, right? It's awkward to, um, to have the thought, like, I think that my brother is jealous of me. And if you say, if you actually come out and say that, it, that's, that, that's probably, that conversation is probably not going to be productive, let's say. So when you do articulate this new boundary line, I would focus on, I would focus on how you, hmm, I'm trying to think of the best way to put this. Rather than say, you know, focus on something that they said that could be interpreted as um, resentful or cutting to, 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 to say, look, to air this, to air this out, to say, I feel stressed. I feel my cortisone levels spiking or cortisol. I feel my cortisol levels spiking when you say this. So I feel I have a stress response. So like, keep it really scientific. That's what I'm trying to say. So you're not interpreting anything that they're saying. You, you are simply saying, this is the physical reaction that I am having. I feel stressed. And see what they say to that. Because the thing is, if the person is a psychologically well-adjusted individual who just has some, a bit of ego management work to do, or maybe more than a bit, but if this person is psychologically well-adjusted and a loved one says to them, I am experiencing stress, I am experiencing pain in response to something that you said or something that you did or didn't do, that person is gonna say, oh, expletive. I really need to look at this because this is my loved one. If I've had, if my, my behavior has had this effect on them, I need to look at this. I need to examine this. It's time for some self-reflection. So if, if this family member is in that category, then great. Then I think that that will be a productive conversation. On the other hand, you know, you may have someone who is not psychologically healthy and they may turn to gaslighting. And the reason that I say keep it scientific is that it's hard. I think it's hard. I, I imagine that it would be harder to gaslight. Um, I don't know why, like this is a thing, gaslighting. And family members do it all the time. The, the family members who are not psychologically healthy individuals. And, the, and this, is where, this is where I run out of ideas, to be honest with you. Um, because if your family member is trying to turn, turn your pain around and make it into your problem rather than taking responsibility, then you have to have a much, much clearer, firmer, smaller boundary, smaller boundary line and say, I need to limit my interactions with you for my own mental health and my own emotional well-being. And hold firm to that, you know. I, as I say, I, I have family who, you know, will then try to make this into a melodrama and go around to, you know, other family members and try to say, you know, I can't believe this person is doing this to me, making it all about themselves. And again, back to step one, this is not, there's nothing you can do about that. It's not your problem. It's not something that you can figure out. And so I, 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 I feel like this isn't helpful enough because I, I want to reach through this iPhone camera and like fix your problem for you, like more so than with any other video I've done so far. And again, 
back to step one. Just as you can't fix this, I can't fix this either. And I think the best thing that I can do, the most useful thing I can do is to offer you the, um, you know, the comfort of I've been there. Um, you know, I've witnessed the self, the attention seeking behavior, you know, even if it's, it's not something that would qualify as over resentment, it is that like, like sucking it away from you, trying to, um, trying to, to, you know, keep, keep your, keep your wings clipped like that. I definitely have experienced that the irony of that, but, um, again, that's TMI territory. So let me know how this lands for you. I would love to hear, you know, and I imagine a lot of you will be responding to me by DM because this is so personal. But let me know, let me know how it lands because I think, I, like I said, I, this is a provisional answer. I will be chewing on this some more in the next few weeks and I'll offer um, a part two. If you have any other questions that you'd like me to riff on in one of these Friday morning sessions, please let me know, leave a comment or send me a DM. There is also a link to an anonymous form on my website. Um, if you go to the about page at cometparty.com, you can leave an, you could submit an anonymous question there or just send me a DM. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this was helpful and there'll be more for me next week. Have a good day. Have a good weekend, et cetera, et cetera.